Today, you learn to harness the power of sound in electronics to do anything from playing songs to making torture devices. Welcome to episode 3 of my Arduino tutorial series, where we'll be covering everything about one of the coolest components there are, buzzers. So, what is a buzzer? Well, in practice, it's just a component that makes sound when you give it electricity. These ones that usually come in starter kits are what we call PSO buzzers, because they take advantage of the piezoelectric effect, which is how some crystals change shape when you pass a current through them. I have a more in-depth explanation of this effect over at my science channel if you want to learn more. If you opened up a buzzer, you'd find this kind of metallic disc inside. This is called the PSO element, and it's composed of the piezoelectric material, in this case a type of ceramic, and a metal that serves as an electrode to conduct the electricity into it. If you pass a rapidly oscillating current, a PWM signal, through this, the piezoelectric material will start oscillating and produce sound. However, there are two types of buzzers, active and passive buzzers. And if you don't understand the difference between them, you'll get tired of wondering why your buzzers aren't buzzing. Believe me. <laughs> Luckily, their naming is quite descriptive. Passive buzzers are, well, passive. You just give them a PWM signal, they turn it into sound, no objections. Active buzzers, on the other hand, are, well, active. They take the initiative and instead of letting you give them the PWM pulse, they have some circuitry inside which turns a steady voltage into the oscillating signal needed to drive the piezo. For this reason, active buzzers are sealed while passive ones are not. So, to distinguish them, you can just look at their underside. So, after that brief introduction, let's use them! Let's start with a little test of what I just explained. Simply connect 5 volts and GND to two lines separated by two holes on the breadboard. No need to use a resistor this time. Now, if you plug the passive buzzer pins into those lines, making sure the positive one indicated by this plus on top is on the 5 volt one, it doesn't sound. Or actually, maybe take it out because it starts hitting and it's probably not good. <laughs> now, plug the other one in. Ouch. I wonder how many people I just woke up. And of course, this works the same way with a good old digital write on any pin. On the other hand, if you change it to analog write on a PWM pin, now the passive buzzer works while the active buzzer sounds weird as now you're basically just cutting its power supply periodically. Although, make sure you're using something other than 255, so it's not equivalent to, you know, a steady signal. Alright, so now you know how to produce a raw, ear-piercing sound, which you can use for an alarm, to wake someone up in the most annoying way possible, or to torture someone by leaving it on and going somewhere else. But how do we, say, play a melody? Well, let's try something. We'll go progressively up in analog write values and the sound's frequency should go up. Alright, so in our write setup, let's put any PWM pin as output, oh, output, of course. And then here, let's just do analog write our pin and let's say 10, for example. And then we'll go up to say uh, 25 and then 50 and then just 100 150 and then 200 and 255 and then let's add some delays in between. So let's say 500 milliseconds, half a second. Let's add it all in between these. And done. Now let's upload this. Wait, what? Like, it's kind of changing a little bit, but not in frequency. What's happening? Well, remember that what changing the value in analog write does is change how much time it spends on versus off in each pulse, what we call the duty cycle. But 
the frequency of those pulses stays exactly the same. At most you'll be changing its harmonics, which is probably what you can notice changing here. But then, how do we change the frequency? Well, remember when we emulated analog write through really quick on and off digital writes in our LED tutorial? Well, there we had control over all the timings, and that means not only the duty cycle, but also the length of the pulses. So let's do digital write, RPN, hi, and here we'll set a delay of say one millisecond. No, delay, no. There we go. One millisecond, and then digital right six. Now to low, and in instead of setting it to like ten, for example, as we did uh, last time to be able to control the duty cycle, remember that here we don't want to control the duty cycle. We want to control the frequency. So we can just set them to the same thing, and then uh, increase them both at the same time later. So let's see what this sounds like. And if we now set it to say 2, we should be getting half the frequency. And we could set it to 5, and it'll be even lower. So yeah, you get the drill. But guess what? It turns out there's also a command which makes this much easier. This Tone command. The tone command takes as inputs the pin, in our case 6, it, it has to be a PWM pin and it will only work with passive buzzers, of course, uh, then a frequency in hertz, say 137, and optionally a length in millisecond. Oh, it says here. Cool. Um, which we can use delay, so I won't use it for now. So if we upload this, we should get a square wave with a frequency which would land us around C sharp 3 in the musical scale. I... If you know, you know. Now, if we try our sequence from before by using tone commands... It works! Also, if you want to turn it off, instead of doing a tone with frequency 0, uh, you can actually do no tone and then the pin, and this will make it stop sounding. Or alternatively, you can do use the duration parameter from before, so yeah, you can just choose. But tone is more powerful than it seems, because it's what will allow us to not only play custom tones with any frequency and make stuff like a DIY mini keyboard, which you'll be able to do when we go into buttons, but also play entire songs. Because you see, apparently, there are people who don't have anything better to do than to manually write, tone by tone, frequency by frequency, popular songs so they can listen to them on their Arduinos. There are several GitHub repos dedicated to this, so you can just choose a song, and this is usually what they do. First, they define the frequencies for each note, then they write all the actual notes and durations for the song in this matrix form, and then they pass this matrix into a function that uses a tone command to play each note. You could just make it all out of tone commands directly, but it's more compact like this. So I got one of the scripts from GitHub, and if we now upload it, However, what if you want to play other songs that aren't in these repositories? Well, don't worry, there's still a way. Because there's a tool online that converts a MIDI file, basically a sound file with discrete notes and durations, into an Arduino sketch that uses the tone function. So really, all you need is a MIDI file for your song. Now, you could convert MP3 to MIDI, but in my experience it usually doesn't go too well. But there are MIDI versions of many songs, so granted it won't include all songs, and it's also a bit of a lossy process, especially in terms of timbre.
and in case you were wondering, yes, you can play the actual songs without having to convert them to MIDI first, but that far exceeds the Arduino storage capacity. I mean, you can't blame it, it's a microcontroller, not an SBC. So you'd need an SD card module. That's a bit much for today, and mostly I need to get my hands on one of those. But if you happen to have one and want an extra challenge, look into the TMR PCM library. Still, if you'd want me to make a dedicated tutorial in the future, feel free to tell me down in the comments. Oh, and by the way, what we just learned applies just as well to PSO speakers as it does to magnetic speakers, these big ones that computers normally use. So if you just strip the wires and plug them in, you can control any speaker with your Arduino. So if you enjoyed the video, please make sure to leave a like, subscribe and maybe leave a comment down below. It really helps a lot because it's really hard to make these kinds of videos actually reach people. And that's it, I'll see you in the next one.